large rifle primer, small rifle primer. Now remember, in part three, we swage these primer pockets. If we didn't swage first, you would never be able to do this step. Now there's a couple reasons why I like to do this at this particular time in the reloading process. First and foremost, and the most important, is just to make sure that your primer seats just below flush. And second, the reason why I like to do this at this point in time of the reloading process as I have found is once in a while you might scar or scrape or scratch the inside of this primer pocket and it can make seating the primer a little bit hesitant once in a blue moon. By doing this first before the second round of cleaning those little stainless steel pins in your tumbler will make this primer as smooth as butter. Okay, so when you do this process, you don't want to overdo it. You want to do it just so that the primer seats just below flush. You don't need to ram it down. You can always use a brush to brush off the uniform. That's it. And sometimes, once in a while, I'll actually do this process. Quick seat a primer, see how it seats. Just make sure it's below flush. Quick do a tabletop test, make sure there's no wobble on the brass. And then if it sets down super flat, super fast, and no wobble, check your primer. Just make sure it's just below flush. You're good to go. Run it on the decapper, pop it back out. You're done. Once it passes that tabletop test, you can slap it down on the table and there's no wobble. Perfect uh, seating of the primer just below flush of the base. Then you can go to town. And thank God, you only got to do this once. This is why I like the Lyman Case Prep Center. Okay, now that we have uniform primer pockets, there's one big massive fat elephant in the room that we need to address, and that's headspace. And although this might seem rather routine for some of you veteran reloaders, if you're new to the game, before we even lube and size brass, we need to look at this issue, headspace. It's super important. Now let me get this out of the way. I'm just telling you what I do. I'm not telling you this is what you should do. This is where you need to do a little bit more homework, get out those reloading manuals, search uh, YouTube, the forums. Uh, I can't address. This is probably the most important uh, issue when it comes to reloading your ammunition. And that's number one, headspace. Now, two popular tools used for measuring headspace are Wilson case gauges and bump gauges, like this Hornady uh, headspace gauge that you clamp on your calipers. Uh, whether it's Hornady or Sinclair, they're pretty much the same. Now, although I still use the Wilson case gauges, you know, and I got them when I first started, uh, don't get me wrong, they're nice, but I typically use them when I'm using the progressive nature of my press which is pretty rare. I only use the progressive nature of my press, uh, typically when I'm making pistol ammunition. Uh, the reason why I don't use them anymore, because okay, I'm gonna be a little blunt, guessing, not guessing. Guessing, not guessing. Spray and pray ammo, precision ammo. So uh, because of that, Now, with that out of the way, 
This is what I like to use, a Hornady bump gauge, also a headspace gauge that you clamp on your calibers. For the 5.56 or 2.23, it's the A330, For the 7.62 or whatever, 308, it's the D400. Okay, let's start out with the 5.56. can't stress the importance of using an anvil and also the importance of why you should use a decapping die, especially for crater primers. Decapping your brass like we did in step one or part one, this is the reason why. You'll get an accurate reading. Now this is the brass that was just ejected out of my Rock River Arms 20 inch bull barrel varmint. And the video, uh, if you did watch it, that ran that six by five target. Now let me just miscellaneous pick one out of this group. And let's decap this so we can get an accurate reading on the headspace. Let's see what we came up with. Now first and foremost, zero out your calipers. Now one more thing, always keep a pack of fresh batteries laying around for your calipers. It's nothing worse when you're in the middle of a reloading session and it's nine o'clock at night and all the stores are shut down and your display starts going a little haywire. You're like, man, that measurement just doesn't seem right. More times than not, your battery's going dead. Always keep a fresh battery in your calipers before you do anything what I like to do is I purposely keep this one piece of brass laying around. I know for a fact it is 1.750 inches long. Measure twice, cut once. Okay, so this is the brass I just decapped. This is some really old uh, remanufactured uh, ammunition that I purchased and this is some freshly reloaded ammunition that I just got doing uh, a couple months ago. Now the brass is ejected out of my Rock River Arms full barrel varmint is usually 99% of the time exactly 1.456 inches. That brass will custom expand to the chamber of my rifle. That brass is set for that specific rifle in terms of headspace. Let's check out the ammunition that I just got done reloading a couple months ago. And like I said, for an AR, I typically like to bump my headspace 0 0.003 inches from where it's ejected. Now the mount that you bump your brass back is up to you. And this is where you need to do your homework. Now on the other hand, most manufacturers like to play their headspace on the safe side. So it can work in a broad spectrum of rifles. Now this remanufactured ammunition comes out to 1.451. Heck, I've seen some manufactured ammunition go all the way down to 1.450449. Uh, like I said, they like to play it safe just to make sure they don't have any issues with headspace. Now with this Lake City uh, military brass I purchased online, most likely it's fired out of uh, a fully automatic weapon uh, or a military grade rifle that has a super generous headspace. Now, if you're ready to get your mind blown away, I'll bet this is over 1.460. Yep, 1.4625. Now, here's a little trick when using these bump gauges. Slightly spin the brass in the gauge to get a consistent reading. One question you might be asking yourself about this once fired Lake City brass that came out of a military grade rifle that I purchased online. And you're like, holy smokes, is there something wrong with the chamber of that military grade rifle? Most likely not. They're trying to make sure 
when that guy's life is on the line and he's going through a fully automatic fire, continuous fire, the chamber is heating uh, up, it's contracting, expanding, or whatever, uh, they want to make sure that no matter what ammunition they feed into that rifle, that it's going to fire. And that's why. Now with all that said, the name of the game is, make this short and simple, if this once fired Lake City Brass I purchased online is 1.4625 inches, when I size it, not only do I need to go past the measurement of the ejected brass out of my Rock River rifle, as shown in that video that I'm sure all of you have watched, <laughs> but I need to go past that 0 0.003 all the way down to 0 0.1453 from 0.14625. You only need to do that when you're buying once fired military grade brass online. Once it's fired out of your rifle, for in this example, my Rock River rifle, it comes out ejected at 1.456. I only need to bump it 0 0.003 inches. Simple as that. Purchased online Lake City brass, brass ejected out of my rifle, reloaded ammunition headspace. This is what I do, this is not what you do. You need to do your own homework. Now I'm not gonna go through all that rigmarole again on the 308 or 7.62 or whatever you wanna call it. Now, just to blow your mind away on this 308 or 7.62 Lake City brass I purchased online, this is Hornady brass, brand new, right off the shelf. 1.6235. Yeah, that's huge. Brass, it's ejected out of my Rock River 308 rifle. 1.627. Now, when I'm recording this video, I truly don't know how long it's gonna take to cover this information. And YouTube only gives me 15 minutes per video. And I know for a fact, the lubing and sizing and going through all the dyes and adjusting it, it's gonna take me well past that point. And I'm not leading you on. But that said, stay tuned to part six, where we're gonna lube and size this brass correctly. And I just wanna make sure we don't forget anything. And you're gonna join me on this journey all the way to the point of firing this ammunition right on the target as you can watch it with my Rock River 5.56 AR and my Rock River 7.62 AR. I'll see you next time. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.